Sanya De Okoli, CEO of Alpha African Advisory, joins us now to discuss further. Good morning. Good morning, Reuters. Thanks for joining us. You were here with us last Friday when the variant broke out, and we asked you about the RAND beginning. So there's a lot to ask here. I guess first, uh, do you side with President Ramaphosa? Is this unfair? What, what do you... I, let's just say I completely empathize with him. Okay. But I think we do need to take a holistic view on the issues. Mm. So if we step back, Omicron, why is everybody so worried and scared? There are a few reasons. Firstly, they don't know that much about it. And nobody wants to be caught being inactive when they should have taken you know, quicker um, action based on what happened in 2020. Then from the little data they've seen, they're concerned that it's more transmissible and there are also con concerns that it evades immunity protection from either uh, people who, who've had COVID before or from vaccines. There are concerns that you know, it would render th those two um, forms of immunity ineffective. So they're worried. Mm. But having said that, I think COVID has shown us now more than ever that our fortunes are inextricably linked. No nation can afford to take an action without considering the global implications. We're living in a global world. Right. It's globalization, whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not. Right. We are all operating in a global context. And one thing that people are concerned about, because at the end of the day, South Africa said, hey guys, we've sequenced this thing and we see that there's a new um, virus. Right. And they feel like they are being punished for putting their hand up and showing the world something that affects all of us. What will happen next time mm. if another country sees another um, variant or something else? We know that in West Africa and other parts of Africa who've had Ebola, will they be scared to speak up so that they're not punished? Right. We really need to look at the, the, the issues. Mm. Fantastic. Now, so I want to ask you about solidarity versus safety, right? Um, you know, Rwanda and Angola saying that they will halt flights from Southern Africa, and then Kenya saying, no, we'll keep it going, and we'll just put in some more stringent uh, uh, factors in place to screen passengers coming in from Southern Africa. So how do you see it? Solidarity, African solidarity or safety? <laughs> wow. I see it as solidarity and safety. Ah, so we can have both. We can have both. And right. I think that is what Kenya is striving to do. Because the reality is, we do need to keep ourselves safe. Mm. Nobody wants 2022 to be a repeat of 2020. We, we just, we don't have the financial reserves. Right. Our economies are not in the, the same shape. We don't even have the emotional and mental reserves to have another 2020 in 2022. Mm. But having said that, we can't be reactionary. You would have thought that with everything that we've gone through, we would have considered responses to what we know are very real and life risks. Mm. And it would appear that Kenya is seeking to take that stance in that they're not being re reactionary and saying we're banning flights, but they have increased the safety measures. Because, you know, as at today, more than 20 countries have found, have discovered, have, have had people test positive for Omicron. Right. What are we going to do? Shut the skies? Right, right. And that's again, that's South Africa's concern. Six countries were banned initially. As at today, three of them have demonstrated a spike in um, in number of COVID cases, but three haven't, certainly not in reported cases. Right. What about the other countries mm. that have discovered Omicron within their, their, their um, within the nations? Are they being banned? How do we determine who gets banned and who doesn't mm. get banned? Uh, so, okay, so great stuff. And that's on Kenya. So, but you understand where Angola and Rwanda are coming from with their restrictions. Are they safety first. Safety first. Again, considered holistic approaches. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. Okay, so I, you've mentioned 2022 already. Is this where we are now, where the aviation sector is living on the edge. Who knows what's discovered in March of 2022 or September of 2022 or 23? I mean, on and on. Is this, is this what the, uh, I don't want to use new normal again because it's so overused, but fine. Is that, you know, is that where we are now? 
as a woman who believes very strongly in the power of her words, I was very <laughs> careful yeah. about um, making statements. But what I will say is that we do need to continue to make, remain sensible, taking common sense approaches, use of masks, um, social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. And we are going to continue to um, have to depend on our resilient right. muscles. Right. Resilience right. muscles. It's, it's, it's fascinating stuff. Um, Zambia Airways, after 27 years, <laughs> they're back. They're doing domestic flights. They plan on expanding across Africa in 2022. We always seem to talk aviation every time you're on the show. But yeah, what, what, do, you make of, uh, what do you make of it? I would like to understand the business case. Mm. Because on the one hand, yeah. you already know my um, reservations about certainly government-held airlines or some of these national airlines that for some could be considered vanity projects. Yep, yep. But on the other hand, having been to um, Zambia and having flown into Lusaka and had to make my way to Livingstone by road. Oh, wow. Livingstone, Victoria Falls, et cetera, et cetera, quite a tourist destination. You do recognize that transport links within the country need to be improved. So it's really understand. I'd like to, I'd like to see the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I have to sneak this in very quickly. When you talk about transport links being improved, the African continental free trade area is still optimistic on, 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 on the links that need to be put together for that to work so that countries within Africa can trade properly. Every time you mention transport links, I have to bring that up. Yes, that's And same every stand. time I will say, as much as I love optimism, I also want to see action. Fantastic. Away from aviation, I have to ask you about Def Elimu, this app in Kenya that is supposed to be uh, training bank um, bankers, uh, bank uh, staff in Kenya to sign language in order to assist folks with disabilities with banking. And I wanted to get your thoughts on, on that uh, development in Kenya. I think it's an interesting way of tackling the inclusion, the banking inclusion issue that so many countries, especially in this part of the world, are trying to address. Um, as you said, it's an app which, an app and a, and a website, website, yeah, yeah, website yeah. platform yeah. that started off with 100 words, sort of commonly used um, words. And then they've put a community section so more people can upload videos. So those who use the, 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 the platform can expand their vocabulary um, using Ken um, of Kenyan sign language. Right. I think it's a good move. It's, it's a positive step. Mm. Is enough, when you look at, I mean, you, can, you and I take this for granted, we can physically walk into a bank or take the stairs or use it. Is, is generally, the private sector, is enough being done to cater to disabled uh, uh, folks, disabled people? Or, or, how, or can, more, can more be done? I, I, think, I think, yeah, so to your first question, in a word, no, not enough is being done. And yes, absolutely, more needs to be done. And um, it, a lot of it is mindset and just empathizing and just recognizing that not everybody is as able-bodied. Um, so, and we need to cater to them because mm. they, they too have needs. But well, it comes at a cost. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That's, but everything that's, comes at a cost. Right, right. Because even when they don't put it, there is a human cost to it. And I'll give you a quick example. With the bands, I was reading about a, an 18-year-old girl who got attacked by crocodiles in Zambia, English girl, now having difficulty getting back to England for proper treatment. Wow. So everything, every decision we make does have a cost. Sometimes it's not financial, sometimes it's human, mm. and somebody needs to pay it. So when we're looking at our cost-benefit analysis, again, we have to look at it more holistically. Fantastic stuff. I, I, well, on the flip side, if you, uh, and I only have less than 30 seconds, if you, if you build the infrastructure to cater to disabled folks, then there's revenue that comes from more of them Co coming to your competitive establishment. Competitive advantage, right? right? Exactly. Yes. CEO of Alpha African Advisory, Sanyadi Okoli, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your insights.